sense we are receiving a kingdom that can't be shaken. <laughs> we can say it another way. Since we're going to win. Since this kingdom that we are receiving can't be shaken. Is that fair? Is that a fair translation? Since ours will prevail. Then the next phrase. Some translations say, let us show gratitude. Well, that's okay, isn't it? We ought to be thankful. But that's not what it says in Greek. It says literally, let us receive or keep on receiving grace. We need to be thankful, of course. But that's not what he's saying here. He's saying, you, you do understand that grace is not just mercy and forgiveness. Grace is the giving to you everything you need in a situation. Some translators or scholars or theologians use the phrase to translate grace, divine enablement. So that you abound unto every good work, he says, receive this grace. So he says, look, Father, in the midst of all of this, as this kingdom is being established in you, and he's doing what he promised you he would do, and this kingdom can't be shaken, just receive grace. Let him keep giving you what you need to prevail, to overcome, to stand, get you back to Judah, give you Goliath's sword, set you under the tree, not the enemy. Receive what you need. Now that changes everything. It's not just sitting back and saying, well, no matter what I go through, I'm going to be thankful. Well, that's okay. That's a fine attitude, you know, to be thankful and everything. But that's not what this is saying. This is saying, receive his ability. This is why Paul could say, I've, I've experienced this and this and this and this and this and this and this. Shipwreck, beatings, and stoned. Five times, 39 lashes. This guy was a walking scar. He probably hardly walked. And then he, and he says, none of this moves me. I mean, I told the Lord once, I said, I don't even believe that. <laughs> I know he said it, but nobody could say that and really mean it. But of course, I do believe Paul meant it. I just couldn't wrap my mental arms around it. He could, he could say and mean it. None of that bothers me. I'd say, who is this guy? He had learned to just drink of grace, God's ability, God's blessing, God's strength. So, so the verse says, since we are receiving a kingdom that can't be shaken, receive grace, receive this ability. So that you may offer to God an acceptable sacrifice or service. Acceptable. You know, I mean, to me, to us, <clears throat> in our language, acceptable is just, eh, it's acceptable. It's not maybe the best, but it's, but it's, it's okay. This is okay. This is acceptable. That's not what it means. It's you arrest us, you well arrest us pleasing. It's the word for well pleasing. It's the word to describe Jesus was well pleasing. You arrest us to the Father. This is the word that describes Enoch, who had this testimony. He walked with God and was pleasing to him. You arrest us. And God took him to heaven. He's saying, Look, I wanna 
I want to give you so much grace during this season. While everything's shaking around you, I want to give you so much of my anointing, my favor, my grace, that you will not only be acceptable, you're going to be well-pleasing. You're going to stand with strength. You're going to be like my son Jesus. You're going to be like Enoch. You're going to be well-pleasing to me. Some people don't believe they can please God. You can please him. You don't, it's not based on how perfect you are. It's based on your heart, your relationship with him. So that you can serve him in a well-pleasing manner. And serve does not mean to be a servant in the sense that we think of because there are five words in the New Testament for a servant. One of them, doulos, means a bond slave. You do this because you have to. You're owned by someone. And we are bought with a price, but that's not the word here. There's another word in Greek, latris, that means to serve out of relationship or to serve out of worship or as worship. So many, some translations, so like in Romans 12, present your bodies, living sacrifice, holy acceptance, which is your reasonable service. But some translations add, which is your reasonable service of worship. Because if you don't add that, it sounds like they're saying, well, he's done so much for you, the least you can do is present yourself to him. But that's not what it's saying. It says, you should love him so much because of all he's done for you that what you, your love compels you to serve him. This is what, what would, it would be describing a, a, a provider for a family that's not doing it just because I don't want to be a bad dad. You know, I don't want to do this, but you know, everybody expects me to do it. And they'll look down on me if I don't. You know, it's like, I love them so much, I want to protect them and cover them and feed them. I don't do it because I have to. I do it because I want to. This is what Paul said, the love of God constrains me. This is the word used here. He's saying, look, I want to do something in you. I want to pour out so much grace in you. And I'm doing something in you to so fortify and strengthen you in this season. You're going to be such a pleasure to me. And I'm going to, I'm going to pour out my, my favor on you in such a way that you're going to love me so much. I love you so much. You're going to love me so much that you can't help but stand with me, serve me, pray, do what you do. Because you're so in love with me. And I'm in love with you. We just love each other. I challenge any theologian or scholar to tell me that's proved to me that's not what this verse is saying. Because it is what this verse is saying. He's saying, you're not going to just do this because you have to. You won't have a choice from the, at a heart level. The, the, the reason I don't give up on America is because it's not even an option. So what he put inside of me for this nation, he put inside of me for this nation. This is not some sacrifice. Oh, I hate this, but I got to do it. This is, this is because he put something in here. He, he lavished grace upon me to see his kingdom established in this nation. And he so put it inside of me that I could not do anything else. My passion, my heart is to see this nation turn. And this is what he's saying. He said, look, I want to put that in you. This doesn't have to be something you just you do because you're just religious or you just, oh, God, I better go pray. Or, no, nah, I guess I have to go to church today. Uh, it's like, ha! That mindset is just religion. But when you tap into the depth of who he is and what he wants to be to you and to us, it's like David. Yeah, I got a motley crew, but they're going to be the greatest army. And yeah, I'm in a cave, but I'm going to get to the throne. And but, but when I get to the throne, you better believe there's going to be a tent next door and that ark's going to be in there. So and it, as often as I want every day, I can go over there and get in that tent and just worship him. They'll be 24-7 worshiping there because this isn't really about the throne anymore for me. It's not about the army. It's not about Saul. This is about the presence this is about the, the ark this is about him if 
If, could, if, if God could ever get this mindset, heart, into the church. He is. He is getting it into a, a remnant of the church. And when, when he does, it's, it's the game changer. This is the game changer. This is, this is why Paul said, the love of God constrains me. Soon echo, prisoner. That's what it means. Uh, why do I do all this stuff? I'm a prisoner of his love. I can't help it. I just can't help it. He put this inside of me and I just have to do it. That's what he was saying. The love of God has made me a prisoner. 